we've reached the point where we've seen all the series tests we're going to see and so now it's time for a kind of overall practice of um, how do I know what series test to apply to a series uh, and some textbooks have their own section that is just here's a bunch of series and apply whichever test seems reasonable it doesn't tell you which test to apply uh, our textbook doesn't have that but it would logically come after chapter 8.5 and, and before what's currently called 8.6 so I'm calling that homework chapter 8.5-ish. It's just, here's a bunch of series, go test them in the way that they cry out to be tested. Um, maybe before we start that, it would be good to make an organization of our knowledge. So you might want to say, um, uh, let's list the series tests we know. Uh, so what series tests do we know? Um, alternating series test, geometric series, P-series, uh, integral test, direct comparison test, alternating uh, um, inter, uh, limit comparison test, any others you want to think of. So you would, you would list them here and think about um, when does that tend to work well? Um, so uh, like an integral test I would not want to do with a factorial in there because factorials are basically impossible to integrate. Um, I'm going to say at the Calc 2 level, but even at, after Calc 2, factorials are a pain to integrate. Um, and so if I said the integral test here, I would have another category that says uh, doesn't work well when... So like if I said integral test doesn't work well when you have an n factorial. We also don't know how to uh, integrate n to the n. That's, a, that's even worse than n factorial. Um, when does the integral test tend to work well? When it's easy to integrate. I mean, maybe that goes without saying, um, but uh, something like that could be true. Um, so I suggest organizing your knowledge like that. I'm not going to make that chart for you. It's up to you. Another interesting thing to think about is um, which things grow faster than which other things, and do they grow fast enough that the resulting series converges if you divide one by the other? Um, so we'll say uh, which things grow faster than other things. So remember Logarithms tend to grow pretty slowly. Um, x to a power grows faster than logarithms. Uh, e to the x, or you could say b to the x, like some constant to the x, or that's basically r to the n, right, uh, for geometrics. That's all constant to a variable power. And then n factorial grows even faster than that, and n to the n grows even faster than that. Um, so this is at the slow end, and this is at the fast end. So we might say these log grows slower than x to the p. If I divide one by the other, then the numerator and the denominator are kind of fighting. Are they different enough that the denominator is going to win and make the series converge, right? Because all this series stuff, you could say, is the denominator growing faster than the numerator, fast enough to make the fraction go to zero quickly enough for the series to converge. So uh, based on all this, we're going to ask, now this isn't going to be a table with something in each column, um, but we're just going to ask the sum of log n over n to the p, is log n growing slowly enough compared to how quickly n to the p is growing to make this series converge? Then. Well, so that's comparing these two. Then let's compare these two. We'll put this in the numerator because it grows more slowly than that. So we'll say n to the p over maybe r to the n or b to the n. Uh, maybe it's better to call it b to the n because once I have an n to the p, this is no longer geometric. Um, so is b to the n growing fast enough? Oh, we should say uh, b greater than 1 here, otherwise it's not growing at all. Um, so does that converge? So we've said, let's compare these two by that, compare these two by that, 
And now we'll compare those two by saying the sum of v to the n over n factorial. Does that sum converge? And then compare the last two here with the sum of n factorial over n to the n. So I suggest this is our first set of kind of cumulative review exercises, even though it's not formally titled as a cumulative review, um, because the answers to these will tell us interesting things about how fast one is growing compared to the other. Um, so that's what I would suggest is the first set of things to work on, and then go work on the homework.